Good morning, everybody. We are going to have a time of scripture reading and morning prayer together. And so I welcome you this morning. A call to worship on this Monday of Holy Week comes from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Lamentations 1.12 Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow which has been brought upon me, whom the Lord has afflicted. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was as in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen and amen. This morning's reading begins with Psalm 127, and we'll read through 132 if you want to follow along in your Bible. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors, for he gives to his beloved even his sleep. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They shall not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Psalm 128. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you shall eat of the fruit of your hands, you will be happy and it will be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house, your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, for thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Indeed, may you see your children's children, peace, be upon Israel. Psalm 129. Many times they have persecuted me from my youth up, let Israel now say. Many times they have persecuted me from my youth up, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back. They lengthened their furrows. The Lord is righteous. He has cut the cords in two. He has cut the cords of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be put to shame and turned back. Let them be like grass upon the housetops, which withers before it grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his hand or the binder of sheaves his bosom. Nor do those who pass by say, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Psalm 130, wonderful penitential psalm. Out of the depths I have cried to thee, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ear be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, O Lord, would mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul does wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, yea, more than the watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Psalm 131. O Lord, my heart is not proud, or my eyes haughty, nor do I involve myself in great matters, or in things too difficult for me. Surely I have composed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child rests against his mother. My soul is like a weaned child within me. 
O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Psalm 132. Remember, O Lord, on David's behalf all his affliction, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the Mighty One of Jacob. Surely I will not enter my house nor lie on my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the Mighty One of Jacob. Behold, we heard it in Ephrata. We found it in the fields of Ja'ar. Let us go into his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, to thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy godly ones sing for joy. For the sake of David thy servant, do not turn away the face of thine anointed. The Lord has sworn to David a truth which he will not turn back. Of the fruit of your body I will set upon your throne. If your sons will keep my covenant and my testimony which I teach them, their sons also shall sit upon your throne forever. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her needy with bread. Her priest also I will clothe with salvation and her godly ones will sing aloud for joy. There I will cause the horn of David to spring forth. I have prepared a lamp for mine anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon himself his crown shall shine. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This time I'm going to pray the song of Zechariah from Luke chapter 1. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to set his people free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. From the hands of all who hate us he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our Abraham, our father, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins and the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's confess our faith. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into the dead. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our New Testament reading in this Holy Week will come from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 21. Yesterday was Palm Sunday, and so we pick up the next morning. Matthew chapter 21, and if you're following along, beginning at verse 18. Now in the morning, when he returned to the city, he, Jesus, became hungry. And seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it, and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said to it, No longer shall there evermore be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. And seeing this, the disciples marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you shall not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, it shall happen. 
and everything you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. And when he had come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? But Jesus answered and said to them, I will ask you one thing too, which if you tell me, I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John was from what source, from heaven or from men? And they began reasoning among themselves saying, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude for they all hold John to be a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, we do not know. He also said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in the vineyard. And he answered and said, I will, sir, and he did not go. And he came to the second and said the same thing, but he answered and said, I will not. Yet he afterward regretted it, and he went. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the latter. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you that tax collectors and harlots will get into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and harlots did believe him. And you, seeing this, did not even feel remorse afterward so as to believe him. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a wall around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and rented it out to the vine growers and went on a journey. And when the harvest time approached, he sent his slaves to the vine growers to receive his produce. And the vine growers took his slaves and beat one and killed another and stoned a third. And he sent another group of slaves larger than the first, and they did the same thing to them. But afterward, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the vine growers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. And they took him and they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine growers? They said to him, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and will rent out the vineyard to other vine growers who will pay him the proceeds at the proper seasons. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This came about from the Lord and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation, producing the fruit of it. And he who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it falls, it will scatter him like dust. And when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they understood that he was speaking about them. And when they sought to seize him, they became afraid of the multitudes because they held him to be a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we continue in morning prayer. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. And do your ministers with righteousness and make your people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation in your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon all the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the needy, O Lord, not be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, do give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness that you have shown to us and to all men. We bless you and keep you for our creation and preservation and all the blessings of this life. And above all, for your inestimable love in the redemption of the world by the Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Give us the sense of your mercy, with that our hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. This is a prayer for peace. O God, who are the author of peace and the lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all the assaults of our enemies, that today, trusting in your defense, we may not fear the power of any adversary through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father in heaven, we praise you for this new day you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for the Psalms we have read. Lord, build our house today. In a day that many of us are resting in our homes in quarantine, trying to work from home, build our house. Unless you build the house, we labor in vain. Help us not to labor in vain today in whatever we do, whether it's parents ministering to their children, helping them with homeschool. Lord God, whether it is those who are having to go to work and they're having to uh, go to a physical location to serve, whether in the medical field, whether they're in business, Lord, whether on the road, whether in food delivery or service, um, whether they're uh, just what our government is calling essential work right now. Lord God, please protect them. Watch over them and keep them, Father. We are thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you came to this world to expand who Israel is, Lord God, that you did not come simply for the ethnic people of Israel, but you bring the gospel to the nations. And today, we here in this United States of America pray for our president, Donald Trump. We pray for our Congress. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our governor, DeSantis, for our mayor here, for the city of Pensacola, for Escambia County. Lord, please be merciful to us as the rates of this infectious disease arise, Lord, as this virus continues to spread. Be merciful today, O Lord. Be with those who are sick and afflicted. Be with those in the hospitals, God. Be with us who are trying to serve you working from home. Be with those who are resting today. For some of us, may we learn Sabbath. May we guard our minds today and use them not to aimlessly scroll phones and to aimlessly watch TV, but to use them to be set on your light and your truth, O Lord. Help us, God, not to have hearts that are, that are shrinking, but instead growing in your love and grace this morning, we pray. To love our neighbors, to call and check on others, to bless others, we ask. And God, most importantly, I pray that we would look to you in all things. Help our anxieties and fears today, O oh God. Help us to look to you, to trust you, to find our patience, our strength, and our hope in you. Help us to love one another, but most importantly, God, love us and set your affection on us, not because of our works, but because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. May we remember today when we do fail, when we do fall into temptation, it is not our works that save us. It is your righteous, perfect life, Jesus Christ. So may we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith this day. Bless this day, we pray. Bless the ministers and pastors of Escambia County seeking to serve you, God, and shepherd their people in these tumultuous times. Bless our churches, O oh God. For each one watching today, bless their church. Help us to love you with all our hearts. In Jesus' most holy and gracious name, amen. And now I pray unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. May the Lord bless your day richly, I pray. We love you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Lord bless. Bye-bye.